Okay. Good morning, folks. Welcome to worship on February 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th. Who knows what day it is anymore? <laughs> I've lost my calendar and my brain. As we prepare for worship, there are some of you who are out in our parking lot worshiping with us, then welcome to those folks. Um, invite you as uh, there's time. There are a couple of items out on the, under the portico for you if you want to come and pick them up. Uh, bulletin of reports for the congregational meeting. Everybody should have gotten them email, but there are limited copies outside. Please feel free to grab one if you'd like. Also, we have um, communion ashes for at home Ash Wednesday. They're available for you to pick up. Each packet ha uh, has enough ashes, I'm told, for four people. Those of you who are not in our parking lot and worshiping with us online, feel free to get in touch with the church office and we'll make sure that you have enough ashes to cover your household, so to speak, for Ash Wednesday. More about that later in the announcement period. Chris, yeah. you got a little bit of prelude music to get us warmed up for worship? Sure. Good morning again, and welcome to worship on this, the fifth Sunday after Epiphany. I invite you to please turn to page three in a bulletin, if you have one, for our confession and forgiveness time. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, whose goodness cascades over all creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin, trusting in the abundant grace of God. Holy God, you search us and know us. You are acquainted with all our ways. We confess that our hearts are burdened by sin, our own sins, and the broken systems that bind us. We turn inward, failing to follow your outward way of love. We distrust those who are not like us. We exploit the earth and its resources and fail to consider generations to come. Forgive us, gracious God, for all we have done and left undone. 
Even before the words are on our tongues, you know them. Receive them in your divine mercy. Amen. How vast is God's grace. Through the power and promise of Christ Jesus, our sins are washed away and we are claimed as God's own beloved. Indeed, we are forgiven. In the wake of of God's forgiveness, we are called to be the beloved community living out Christ's justice and peace's reconciliation and the Spirit's reconciliation peace. Amen. Let us open our worship singing, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less, printed on page four in our bulletin. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. No merit of my own I claim, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails in lovely face, I rest on His unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. His oath is covenant, his blood sustained in the raging flood. When all supports are washed away, he then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I set, all other ground is sinking sand. When he The grace of God in Christ Jesus poured out in every gift of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. Everlasting God, you give strength to the weak and power to the faint. Make us agents of your healing and wholeness, that your good news may be brought made known to the ends of your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you've been standing, please be seated for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, the 40th chapter. The Judeans in exile have a good reason to be hopeful. The one who will bring them to freedom is the God who created the world the God who subdues the rulers of the earth and gives strength to those who are weary. Now the reading. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sets above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretch out the heavens like a curtain and spread them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows upon them and they wither. and the tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom then will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? 
Lift up your eyes on high and see. Who created these? He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, no one is missing. Why do you say, O J Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youth will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Word of God, word of life. morning, everybody. It's nice to be here. Welcome to everybody at home and in the parking lot and everywhere. Thank you. Um, nice to be here. Okay. Confession. These readings, there's a lot to them. And way back in the fall, one of the things that I tried to impress upon the children was the idea that when you read something, you have to chew on it. You have to chew on it for a while until it really sinks in, and that gives God a chance to get into your head and give you that God drop. That's where I was this week. So with that, I'm going to reread something Marilyn just read, and she did a fabulous job, but I'm going to reread it. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths, um, even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Reminds me of a song, Chris. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Okay, I'm in trouble here because it says even the youth are going to faint and grow weary. So I'm, I have no hope. But Seriously, you know I always want you to participate. So this is a raise your hand kind of thing. If you're in the parking lot, if you're at home, if you're in church, you raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've ever been doing something and you are just physically exhausted and don't know if you can finish. Never? Okay, raise your hand if emotionally you've been drained. Raise your hand if you've ever been frustrated. Okay, and raise your hand if you've ever grieved and wondered, am I going to pull my way out of it? Okay, those are the things that make us weary and make us faint and get exhausted. And right now, I kind of feel like we're surrounded by that kind of stuff right now. But there's hope. Hang on, just wait for it. There's hope. Raise your hand if you've ever felt joy. Raise your hand if you've felt love. Raise your hand if you've just felt silly sometimes. Whew. Do you get exhausted feeling those? Never. Never. I'm never exhausted being goofy. I'm never exhausted being joyful. Those are, those are the feelings I thrive on. So this lesson is a little bit difficult. So to show my point, and I'm sorry, people in the parking lot, you just have to use your imaginations for this part. And don't worry, you don't need to zoom in on this. If I hold up this single piece of this really, really cool jigsaw puzzle, do you know what it is? No, what's it a picture of? Do 
you know, I got to tell you, you're not going to know. Next, if I hold this up and I say, oh my gosh, this is so cool, some people are going to look and say, whoopee, it's a piece of fabric. Sometimes when we're growing weary, one of the problems that we have is we don't see the whole picture. We don't see all of God's plans. And I think that's what I get, uh, what I get anxious about right now. I, I want to see how is this going to end? Where are we going? When are we going to get there? And that's frustrating for me. But in the gospel that you're going to hear in just a few minutes, we get another seed of hope. Yes, in the lesson Marilyn read, we get hope because God does not grow weary. He strengthens us. In the gospel, one of the things you're going to hear about is how, as a community, they helped each other. Jesus was healing the sick, and some people are so sick, they couldn't be taken to be healed. And so the community rises up and helps them. So that's your piece to save. How, what part are you in this community of helping others who are growing weary? Now, God's, the whole picture. When I held this up, you didn't hear Pastor's snarky comment. He says it's a jigsaw puzzle. Well, yeah, it is, but what's it a picture of? So it's a picture actually of a beautiful train going over a bridge. It's absolutely gorgeous. But we don't see the whole picture in one piece. We don't see God's plan. We're only humans. We're only a part of God's plan, and we don't see the whole picture. Then I held up this cute piece of fabric. Yeah, it's really cute. Whoopee. Once you see the whole picture, then it becomes beautiful. We have to be patient with God's plan. It's not our plan. It's God's plan. I have one more minute. Okay, I have 59 more seconds. Here's your homework for tonight. Go home, get on the internet, and I want you to Google Derek Rodman. I think I said the name right. He was an Olympic sprinter. He had trained for years to be in the Olympics, and he was in the Olympics in, Sp in Spain, excuse me, in Spain. And he's running, and he's leading, and he's fabulous, and he's feeling, yes, I've got this. And he's going, and all of a sudden, he crashes to the ground. Apparently, he'd torn a muscle. All his dreams shattered in that instant. It's not over. His dad, I get choked up saying this, his dad comes down from the stands, lifts up his son, and walks him to the finish line. Now, he didn't win the gold medal. That was his plan. God had a bigger picture. Derek has gone on to be a motivational speaker, and I'm sure at some point, someone's heard his message, and it's helped them. Remember, it's not our picture, it's God's picture, but God and our community will get us there. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your words. Thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for picking us up when we're weary. Walk with us through this journey and guide us and help us guide our community. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Laura. When I looked up trust um, in this hymnal, I came across a song under trust that uh, Mr. B brought to my attention. I hope you enjoy it. Rain. God. 
God's worth are so worthy of trust. Oh, there's that word, trust. God's mercy falls on the just and the right. Full of God's love is the earth. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love on your God of creation, we long for your truth. You are the water of life for others. God will protect us from darkness and death. God will not leave us to starve. So rain down, rain down. Rain down your love on your people. Rain down, rain down, rain down your love, God of light. Rain down your love, God of The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told him about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sundown they brought to him all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons, and he would not permit the demons to speak because they knew him. In the morning while it was still very dark, he got up and went, in, went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him, when they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go into the neighboring towns so that, they, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For that is what I came out to do. And he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. If you stood for the gospel, please be seated. It was a year ago today, well, at least the first Sunday in February, when we were gathering inside this building for worship services, and then we're returning for a lunch and, the and our February congregational meeting. Things were looking different. People were gathering and talking and chatting, and as our meeting went through, we were excited to hear about all of the incredible ministry that had happened in 2019. And then I dropped a bombshell on you all and told you that I would be retiring in 2021. Maybe that was the beginning of the bad part of the year for some of you. A couple of weeks later, I was at then called Rayleigh Field, where the, where the um, River Cats were holding their Sunday open house family gathering. I bought four tickets, uh, tickets to four different games because, you know, that was going to be the excitement of 2020. Sitting in the stands on Friday after, or Monday afternoons or evenings, enjoying. Hey, you know how that went, don't you? Uh, didn't go very well. In March, we shut down. It began to be a period of time when I think we all just sort of got tired. Tired of news. Now, I know that I am a news junkie. I could probably sit and watch news 14 hours a day if I was allowed to. 
I know that at night, as I'm watching the news, across the bottom is the ticker tape telling me all of the bad stuff that's happened with, co with COVID-19 and coronavirus. I know that as I sit at my computer, uh, the, my homepage, if you will, is set up for a news feeds. And every once in a while, I get a bleep that something new has broken. I find it difficult at times to not immediately go over and read that. And then I feel, realize how frustrated I get, how disappointed I am, how inundated with news I am. And yet, because I'm addicted, I can't yet break it. There's never been a 12-step program or a support group that I found for those of us who are news junkies and addicts. But I realize that for many, not just me, but for many of you as well, this has become a hard year. You've lost a sense of excitement over things. The news seems to be too troublesome. And we've been through a lot in 2020, haven't we? Contention and tension running rampant. I've used the expression here that we are in deployed stage of worship life. We're not gathering in this wonderful building with all these great comfortable chairs. No, you're gathered at your home in wonderfully comfortable chairs and I suspect a different outfit from what you might wear here in worship time. Or you're now sitting in a car or in a chair outside of your car in a parking lot. It's not exactly what we expected, not what we hoped for. We're deployed from our worship space. We're in exile. The prophet Isaiah proclaims God's word also to people who are in exile. In this section of Isaiah, chapter 40, it's the beginning of the end, if you will. Isaiah has been given the proclamation that the exile for which these folks have been in for decades will soon be over. Now, to give you a little more understanding, Isaiah is a long book in the Old Testament, 60-some chapters long. I, I don't believe it's one prophet. I believe it really is three prophets who are proclaiming God's good news all with a sense of who Isaiah is. The, the first one is, the, is about the people going into exile themselves. The, the message of the exile was because they didn't trust God in a sense. The Babylonians came in and conquered Judah and Jerusalem and took away the leaders. I suspect that probably meant the rabbis, the teachers, because that's what invading armies did in those days. They removed those who had influence and power, leaving the people with a surrogate, someone of their own standard, because without that leader, they were clueless about what was going on. So it seems to me it was the leaders, the, the, the upper echelons, the rabbis, the priests, who were now in Babylon and hearing G Isaiah, the second Isaiah, beginning in chapter 40, proclaiming to them the end of an exile period. I have to think that those folks were beginning to wonder, would things ever go back to normal? Hasn't changed a whole lot in a couple of thousand years, has it? I know that I'm wondering, will it ever go back to normal? Will we ever be doing what we used to do? Or will we now have new precautions and new protocols to follow? Will we ever hear good news? Will I ever sit at now Sutter Health Field and watch the River Cats play? Will I ever get to go to a baseball stadium ever again in the rest of my life? I suspect I will. I just don't know when that will be happening. And like those folks in Babylon in, under exile and captivity, I think we also wonder, where is God in the midst of this all? Those words from Isaiah 
proclaim a great news. That God was there from the very beginning. That God held things. In, in, in this message from Isaiah, God doesn't live, if you will, by the news of what's happening. No, God is there. Have you not known? Have you not heard how it has been? Uh, have, excuse me. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? God is there. In our deployed moments, God is there. Do we always see God? No. Sometimes many of us get caught up in that ticker tape across the bottom of a screen. Death rates rising. Hospitalizations on a horrid arc up. And then a glimmer of hope. The death rate slows. The hospitalization arc comes down. Maybe we have survived what was taking place because of our decisions in the end of last year. Maybe. But there are still repercussions to be had. There are still those moments when we faint, when we're exhausted, when it seems hopeless, when like Peter's mother-in-law, we just lie in our bed with a fever of anxiety and frustration. This last week has been a weird one. I, I realize it. I mean, we have, I have a pattern, if you will, and Joan has a pattern. She leaves me every Wednesday afternoon to go down to San Jose so that she can help Campbell in his kindergarten learning on a distant basis. She sits with him, and then on the evenings, we talk to each other, and I am always thrilled to hear what Campbell has done, what Kennedy has done. It's my lifeline, if you will, in the midst of this deployment from the rest of, part of the rest of my family. But this week has been a little weirder than that. I realized about Thursday afternoon that my energy level was running low. I wasn't feeling very excited about much of anything. I realized that because when I looked on Friday, I had done one reflection all week long. I had been trying to do Tuesday through Friday, and I had managed to do one day, a tribute to Dietrich Bonhoeffer on the, on, on the anniversary of his birth. I'm not sure why, I just felt Drained, exhausted, no fun. And I remember saying on Friday afternoon, God, I want this to change. I need something different. Where are you? I feel alone. About the time that I was thinking that, I got a text from somebody who said, I, I want to talk to you because there's a, an important day coming up in your life and I need to talk to you. Will you be available on Saturday? And it was signed, Hack. Now, I don't have Hack's phone number in my phone directory, but I made an assumption. So, of course, being me, and the thing you also should know is that Hack was the pastor, my pastor, when I was finishing high school and making decisions about the future. Hack also is a retired Lutheran pastor and retired captain in the Navy Reserve. So of course, being me, I texted back, is this Admiral retired Reverend Dr. David C. Hackman? And about an hour later, I get the answer back, wise, guy, although a different word there, yes it is, and I said, yeah, I'll be available on Saturday, give me a call around 3 o'clock, 
I felt a little buoyed about that fact that maybe this was an answer from God. That like the exiles folks in Babylon, I had not been forgotten. That God was doing something special. And then I get home around five. And I walk, through the, I walk to the front door, and there's this package, pretty big-sized package, sitting by my door. And I realized, A, I don't ever send anything to myself or order anything that normally comes USPS. It's Amazon or UPS. But there's this box, and I look at the address, and it's my good friend Marty from Hawaii. Marty had sent me a framed picture, not of himself, but of a picture poster from uh, uh, an artist that he values greatly, Caravaggio, and it was um, the initiation of St. Matthew. And he said, this one's for you. And I realized, indeed, that God had not left me alone. In the midst of this deployed moment, God was there with people who I haven't had a a, a conversation with, in one case for a couple of years, and another case for many months, was remembering. I don't think, in the words of Isaiah, that I am the youths, but I certainly know that as an old person I was faint and weary, and I was feeling exhausted. I think we all are weary and exhausted. But as we wait for the Lord, Isaiah, it would be Yahweh. For you and I, it's Jesus. We shall be renewed. Those simple acts by two friends makes a big difference. Maybe also you become the friends to someone else who needs to be lifted up. Maybe that's our job. Laura, when you were telling, when you were asking us to go uh, search for Derek Rodman, I could see that video in my mind. I have seen it before. I think I have anyway. Maybe we're to be like Derek's father, to run alongside and carry. I think that's what the, huh? Oh, Redman. She just Googled it. Uh, Maybe where to be like his father, to run beside, to walk beside. Because that's what God is doing, walking beside us. Even in this time of frustration and exhaustion, even in this time of waiting for those vaccines to finally get in our arms, for us to finally return to normal whatever that might look like for a while. We will be lifted up on wings of eagles, and we will continue to soar in new directions and in new heights. The year of 2020 and the beginning of 2021 has been exhausting, but I invite you to think of something, to work on something, to practice something. One of the pieces that I do every morning is that I spend some time in a devotion period. Now, I use a resource that I've shared before, God Pause, from Luther Seminary. I got to admit, It's a knife in my heart every time I say that Luther Seminary does better stuff than my seminary. But when somebody, when a seminary, when anyone is doing incredible work and giving me the opportunity to hear God's word and have a short commentary about that, I need to acknowledge it. And I love the diversity of the folks they have who write their commentaries. It gives me a moment when I first begin my day to center my day 
on God's Word. To hear the message, and they use the readings for each of the week, each week, Monday through Friday, and Saturday and Sunday they use a hymn of some sort. But it focuses me. It was a couple of weeks ago that Pastor Brian Mallison, who is the pastor of, um, uh, and now I've lost the name of his church, in Visalia, whom I know, who was writing a series. Since I know Brian, I sent him an email partway through the week. Loving your writing. I didn't expect a response, but Brian has been emailing back and forth for a while now. Maybe that's the message. That even as we're fainting, there's hope. Even as we're weary, there's an eagle that is coming to bear us up and help us soar again. Where will we be next year at this time? In a different place. And I pray that we have resumed our soaring like eagles. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now I invite you to, as we continue our worship, uh-oh, I shouldn't have closed my book, to sing trust, uh-oh, there's that word again, Chris, yeah. trust in you, printed on page seven in our bulletin. Letting go of every single dream, I lay each one down at your My wandering never changes what you see. I tried to win this war, I confess. My hands are weary, I need your rest. Mighty warrior, king of the fight. No matter what I face, you're by my side. As I cry out to you, I will trust, I will trust, I will trust in you. Truth, no, you know what tomorrow brings. There's not a day ahead you have not seen. So when all things be my life. Using the words of the Apostles' Creed, printed on page 7, let us confess our faith. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's power to heal, let us offer our prayers for all who are in need, responding to each petition with the words, We await your steadfast love. We pray for the church's many ministries of healing, for hospital, hospice, and military chaplains, for those serving in prisons, camps, and institutions, and for bishops and pastors facing illness of which we are unaware. We pray to you, saving God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for the health of the earth, for its myriad animals and their habitats, and for all created life that has been harmed by human misuse. We pray to you, provident God. We you await your, your steadfast, steadfast love. love. We pray for the health of people around the globe, especially for the people of Ethiopia and India, for international health organizations, for local and national medical services, and for school officials and teachers facing the pandemic. We pray to you, benevolent God, we, we await your, your steadfast love. We pray for wholeness in our nation, for the safety of our nation's elected leaders, for an end to domestic violence, for an end to prejudice, and for an end to civic terrorism. We pray to you, sovereign God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for a halt to the pandemic, for all who have con contracted COVID-19, for health workers such as Teresa and Lisa, for the prompt distribution of vaccines, and for all who, to who today will die from the virus. We pray to you, compassionate God. We await your steadfast love. We pray for all who are sick and suffering, for those with chronic pain, for those experiencing despair, for infants born impaired and for the aged in decline. And for Elvin, Elda, Richard, Lou, Cynthia, Angie's student, Paul, Larry, Carolyn, Howard, Daryl, Tom, Nina, Ari, Nancy, Tony, Ron, Sandy, Brian, and Christine. We pray to you, consoling God. We await your steadfast love. We pray finally for ourselves, for steady trust in your power, and for health in our weakness. We pray to you, loving God. We, we await, await your steadfast, steadfast love. We praise you for the faithful departed and for their lives of service to others. And we pray that despite sickness and death at our end, we join with them to find our wholeness in you. We pray to you, eternal God. We await your steadfast love. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. If you've been standing for the prayers, please be seated for ministry moments, announcements, announcements. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, there's a bunch of them on page two of your bulletin. For those, I want to highlight a couple of pieces. Remember, congregational meeting will be on Sunday, February 28th, the last Sunday of this month, in the parking lot uh, at around 9, uh, excuse me, beginning at around 1045. Um, the information is there. We've also emailed out all of the... Um, uh, the bulletin of reports, uh, there are, for those of you in the parking lot, remember there are some out there you can go and grab. Um, 
Christine has put in an, an announcement about altar flowers on April 4, 18 or 25. If you'd like to be placing the, uh, the flowers on the altar that day, please get in touch with Christine in the church office. Uh, Ash Wednesday is February 17th. That's coming up quickly. And since we will also be doing that deployed in exile at home, uh, those of you who'd like to put ashes on your forehead during the service, there are packets here in the parking lot or uh, later at church. Uh, please grab some. Each packet has enough for four people. For parking lot people especially, there are some Matthew 25 bags out there as well as uh, Meyer lemons from John and, and Linda Moyle and some oranges from Alex and Bryn. Feel free to grab some. When you take them, please take them home and eat them. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I had another announcement. I lost it. Rob, what have you got? Uh, today is a normal day. We have confirmation at noon and shy at three. Oh, I know what it was. Rob, do you still ask the confirmands to write up uh, messages about what the sermon was about? I do not. Oh, good. Because I don't want anybody to say the sermon was about three hours. <laughs> Way to go, Christine Swetlin. It seemed a lot shorter. I, have I know. Time flies when I speech. <laughs> uh, also, um, I'll... I'll ask you all to keep uh, Brian in your prayers on Wednesday. He's going in for some surgery. And I know that he is anxious, and so is Christine. Now, the hard news is they both have to be in San Francisco by 6 a.m. Wednesday morning. Ooh, I feel bad. Anybody has to be in San Francisco by 6 a.m. Uh, let's pray that uh, surgery is uh, successful and Christine can get some rest when she comes home. Because of COVID stuff, she gets to drop him off and leave. Yep. That's unfortunate in my estimation. Yep. So keep them in prayers, please. I think that's all of the prayer, uh, the announcements for the day. Um, if there's something else that comes up, I'll let you know at the end of worship time. I ask you now to continue as you have been doing all along to place your offering either in an envelope or go on to the Give Plus app on your smartphone and make a contribution to the ministry that we share. As I said last Sunday, I'm trying to remember all the, uh, all the offerings that come in during the course of the week will be placed here on the altar as a reminder of our own offerings. Let's pray. Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us, like a mother receives her child, with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care, and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to give God, God thanks and praise. praise. We give thanks, Almighty God, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you. Through him you created all things and in him you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your son, born of the Virgin Mary. It is he, our Lord Jesus, who fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. It is he who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, <coughs> to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection. Taking bread and giving thanks to you said, Take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This is my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, giving thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. 
And we ask you, send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine here and elsewhere. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth, that we may praise and glorify you through, <coughs> through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him all glory and honor are yours, Almighty God, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. And let us pray with confidence, using the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on, on earth, earth as, as in, in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our, our daily, daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us, us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. us. Save, Save us from the time, time of trial, trial and deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and forever. forever. Amen. Beloved, here is bread and wine. Hopefully there is bread and wine. Here is Jesus. There is Jesus. Come and be fed. Receive the communion blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. And before the benediction, thank you, Chris. You are a gift to us on wings of eagles. You hear me well. Thank you. Oh, the prayer. I'm sorry. Let us pray. Jesus Christ, at this table we have feasted on your very life and are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and in spirit, to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. Amen. And receive the benediction. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Let us close our worship singing, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, printed on page 11 in our bulletin. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And with all your strength, with all your heart and all your soul, with all your mind and all your strength, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. I will serve the Lord. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. I will serve the Lord with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, and with all my strength. With all my heart, with all my soul, with all my mind, with all my strength. 
Peace be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God.